So we finished the semi-flexible solar panel installation. We're not quite producing enough electricity. The next stage is going to be installing rigid solar panels on either side of the cockpit. Should be a pretty simple, straightforward project. Uh, I just did something really stupid. So there you have it. 400 watts of solar on a 30 foot catch. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, we sailed to Roatan in the Bay Islands of Honduras, where we plan to tackle some boat projects before continuing on our adventure. Well, we are back living full-time on Atticus, kind of settling back into our routine. As for today, uh, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of sewing. Recently, we reordered some flexible solar panels. I've already sewed on the Velcro on this side and this side. Um, the problem with these solar panels is they're not identical to our previous set of flexible solar panels. So today I'm going to take the sunshade down and kind of fix up uh, this border so that it lines up with our new flexible solar panels. big time on this awesome sewing space. So there's this huge table back here in the common area of Fantasy Island Marina. I've lined up my solar panel on the sunshade and as you can see the old Velcro kind of ends right here so that's before that solar panel. What I'm going to do is move this Velcro one inch this way. So Desiree finished up sewing our new solar panel. I just want to show you the old solar panel that we're replacing. So these are the cheap semi-flexible solar panels that you can buy on Amazon. I think we bought these three years ago, around $200. I think our new ones only cost us $160. But they all have this junction box here that's basically adhered to the panel itself. Um, and that's definitely a weak point. So on our other old panel, um, what happened to it was the junction box got ripped off because we had it on top of the hard top. And as the boom was tacking over one time, a line that runs along the bottom of the boom got under this wire and pulled it out. Uh, the other thing is you might be able to see that this uh, finish over the cells is a little murky. It's a little bit hazy. That's because the protective film on the solar panel actually peeled away after a while. So we beat these solar panels up. Uh, it was mostly our fault in every way, but they are really not very robust panels. They're cheap. You're getting what you pay for. And we're hoping because we've learned from our mistakes that the new ones will last longer. We got the sunshade up and you can see that basically the entire cockpit is totally shaded. Not just the cockpit, but the majority of the boat. And then the nice thing about these curtains is that on this side where there is no sun coming in, we've got this beautiful view. You know, it's completely unobstructed. So now we are going to get the new solar panels into position and see if Desiree's modifications are gonna work out. the 
solar panels up on the sunshade. Now to connect the solar panels to the charge controller, we came up with kind of a unique solution in a way. The issue at hand is that when we're at anchor, we can have the solar panels on this sunshade. But if there's a storm coming through or if we're underway, we're gonna put the solar panels on the hard top. And so we need to be able to move the solar panels from one position to the other. So the solution that we've come up with, which is temporary and I'd like to do something different, is we have this uh, harness that connects to the solar panels and it can run along the edge of the sunshade down this shroud to this deck connection point and it's basically just an outlet that's raised off the deck and now the harness is connected to the charge controller. Now I'm not actually a huge fan of this setup because the connection point at the deck uh, corroded really badly after a little while and so I've just been sitting here staring at the whole arrangement really trying to think about what I want to do and I think I've got a plan this is the electrical control panel for the hardtop and I knew that I was gonna want to someday wire our some kind of solar panels to the top of the hardtop so I ran a uh, duplex cable going through the hardtop into the cabin uh, that's connected to nothing right now. So I'm gonna wire the harness or the connection point to that cable. part of the new connection wired and so now it's time to modify the harness that I've been using. I'm going to change this connection so this was the deck level connection so I'm going to cut that off and then put on two MC4 connectors. I'm going to change this up so this is actually the split that I made so that we could put the two panels in parallel together and so I'm going to replace that with these fancy little Y MC4 connectors that I bought, as well as adjust the length because the old harness is longer than it needs to be. Interesting, so opened up this wire here and there's definitely some corrosion going on. So I'm going to go up the wire, cut it a little bit shorter, See if I can't find some clean metal in there. Yeah, there we go. That's clean wire. And by the way, I know that there is an actual crimp tool that works with MC4 connectors. If you're gonna do this and you wanna do it the right way, grab yourself one of those MC4 crimping tools. So the harness is wired and in place. Not the prettiest thing, but we'll be able to clean it up and kind of make sure that it stows uh, properly. So the next step is going to be to get the wiring that went to this deck level connection point, cut that wiring, and then connect it to the new wiring that we've got going up through the hard top. And that's gonna be all inside. It's gonna be in some cramped places. Not looking forward to it. And there 
you have it. Got 14, 12 watts. Those solar panels are sucking up some juice and it's late. It's uh, about four o'clock now, so it's definitely after the peak sun time. So we will have to wait and see tomorrow just how much juice we'll be getting. I'll be really curious with these new cheap semi-flexible solar panels from China. Last thing that I need to do is to put some sealant in that hole that I drilled. Okay, well we have solar panels again. <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, we've been at the Fantasy Island Marina for a little over a month now and we're both getting a little stir crazy. We finally got our flexible solar panel array set up and we're producing basically enough energy to get back out to anchor, so we're really excited about that. What a big difference, like, I don't know, 300 feet makes. <laughs> we were literally just right over there on those docks. And now we're anchored out and I just feel so much more like myself. and Calm and appreciative and at ease. And happy, man. <laughs> Boats are made to move and cast the lines. So time for the next stage of our semi-flexible solar panel installation. I'm going to figure out how to install them onto the hard top here. The solar panels have six grommets in them, in the corners and then halfway on the long sides. And what I'm going to do is here on the outboard side, I'm going to install these hooks. Each of these outboard grommets will go through a hook and then each of these inboard grommets will have a line attaching it to the inboard grommets of the other panel. So, should be a pretty simple, straightforward project. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not screwing myself by saying that. I knew I shouldn't have jinxed it, because I just did something really stupid. And what I did, was I butted the solar panel all the way up against this handrail and then I installed the hook so that the hook was completely pulling on the solar panel. As it stands right now, there's no way for me to get the solar panel far enough outboard to actually get the grommet around the edge of the hook. So, this is not going to work. What I'm gonna have to do is take the screw out, move the solar panel about an inch away from the handrail and then install my hooks from that position. So now I got a little hole I gotta fill. So stupid. turned out great. Uh, so now I'm just gonna back all the screws back out and then countersink the holes so that there's a little bit of room for butyl to kind of create a gasket around the screws.
these bad boys are on and I'm very happy with it. So now that the panels are installed, I'm going to work on trying to just tidy up the wiring. So we finished the semi-flexible solar panel installation and today I'm gonna to be working on our rigid solar panel installation. With the 200 watts that we have from the semi-flexible solar panels, we're doing pretty darn good. On a day where I don't use the computer and I don't edit, we basically keep up with the boat's electrical demands. When I'm editing day in, day out using the computer for multiple days in a row, we're not quite producing enough electricity to maintain that level of electricity usage. The next stage is going to be installing rigid solar panels on either side of the cockpit. So what I'm going to do is I've got some stainless steel tube that I'm going to connect from this aft stanchion to the push pit. And then on that tube I'm going to mount the solar panels so that they can pivot up to be exposed to the sun and then pivot down so that they can be out of the way for docking the boat. So the first step I'm going to have to do today is cut our stainless steel tubing to length. Luckily, there is a small boat yard, boat repair facility right next to us. And I'm gonna go over there and talk with those guys and see if I can use a little bit of space and a little bit of electricity. Okay, so the stainless steel tubing is in place, secured, and I like it. Turned out just the way I was hoping it would. So we got the solar panel, and what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and dry fit it and make my measurements for where on the frame the brackets are gonna go. Okay, got the measurements, so let's go make those brackets. Okay, so I've got the wooden brackets fabricated. Now they're just really rough right now. This is just the rough shape. I'm gonna sand them, pretty them up, and then paint them eventually. So I'm going to use the brackets to dry fit the solar panel now.
All right, so we got the rigid solar panels installed. Um, I'm super happy with them. We should now have 400 watts of solar, which I think should cover all of our electrical needs uh, in combination with the wind generator. So the next step is to wire the solar panels to the charge controller, sending those wires through the deck. But that's a job for tomorrow. I'm done for the day. I'm gonna pack up my tools and wrap up. Okay, so it's a new day and it is time to wire these solar panels. So I've got my scan strut through deck clams and I've got my eight gauge wire. And what I've already done here is I have drilled two holes into the rubber of the clam and then cut two slits into the rubber so that this rubber can get around the wire without having to run the wire through the holes. So I'll show you what I mean. through the deck. So now I'm going to cut the outer insulation off of the wire where I know that the wire is going to be passing through the deck. I need to separate it into the two wires that are inside the insulation. So sounds a little bit confusing. I'll show you what I mean. Above deck wiring is complete. So now comes the not so fun part. Now I need to fish that wire from that like deep dark corner of the aft engine compartment and get it all the way around there, over here, and then over this way where all of our electrical wiring goes. So basically I'm gonna have to crawl in there. I'm gonna have to grab that wire. I'm also going to use these little plastic uh, like hose hangers or wire hangers and uh, screw this below the deck going up to keep the wire connected to the bottom of the deck. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, so the wire is back that way. Here we go. So there you have it, 400 watts of solar on a 30 foot catch. And I think we're gonna be basically 100% uh, energy sustainable from here on out between the 400 watts of solar and our wind generator up there. So thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of these fun DIY projects. And other than that, we will catch you guys next week.
man. Well, the solar panels are wired. And I am just so dead. Poured myself a glass of the only booze we have on the boat, which is Kahlua. <laughs> just having some straight Kahlua. Oh. And now it is time to clean up the mess. Oh my God. We're gonna need more Kahlua.